Hello, I'm Ros Atkins. Hello, I'm Ros Welcome to World Have Your Say. We've seen more tweets on the death of Osama bin Laden than we've ever seen on a news story before. And as we found out more about that US raid in Pakistan, your conversations have really started to focus on the circumstances in which bin Laden died. The Archbishop of Canterbury has said he's uncomfortable with what's happened, that it's hard to see justice done if you shoot dead an unarmed man. Some of you watching the BBC in Pakistan say America had no right coming in to your country. The rest of you watching around the world, do you agree with that? Or do you see justice and justification in the way bin Laden was killed? We've got lots to talk about. Let's get in the studio and get things underway. Well, we've contributors in Nairobi, Washington, D.C., and also in Islamabad to get us underway. But before we speak to them, let's get the latest on the bin Laden story. We've got a major development in the past few hours. Al-Qaeda has confirmed Osama bin Laden's death, according to a statement attributed to the group and posted on Internet forums. The statement said his blood would not be wasted and that Al-Qaeda would continue attacking the U.S., and its allies. Also today, thousands of protesters in cities across Pakistan have joined anti-American demonstrations in support of Osama bin Laden and in condemnation of what they perceive as a U.S. attack on Pakistan's sovereignty. Now, in other news, as it has done for several weeks now, Friday has brought anti-government protests in Syria. Demonstrators have taken to the streets in Damascus and other cities despite a huge security presence. Now, as you'll know, President Bashar al-Assad's government has so far not tolerated anti-government demonstrations and unconfirmed reports from activists claim that six people have been killed today. The coroner at the inquest into the London terrorist attacks of July the 7th, 2005, has returned a verdict of unlawful killing. 52 people lost their lives in four suicide bombs. This comes at the end of a five-month-long inquiry that heard evidence from more than 300 witnesses. And the Japanese government has ordered the temporary closure of a nuclear power plant southwest of Tokyo after concerns over its ability to withstand an earthquake. The Prime Minister, Naoto Kan, said the Hamaoka nuclear power station must be prepared for major tremors and tsunamis before it's reopened. Well, let me introduce you to various guests now. In Nairobi, we have Naomi Matua, who is a blogger in Washington, D.C. Seth Jones of the RAND organization joins us live. And in Abbottabad, the city where Osama bin Laden was living in Pakistan, we have Hassan, who joins us live. All three of you, welcome to the program. Let me bring up uh, one message we've received from Diana in Kampala to start our conversation off. She posted on Facebook to say, in an ideal world, you expect even the most evil of men to be given a fair trial. But how can this work? A man that glories in killing others and will kill scores more cannot be left to live. Hassan in Abbottabad, do you agree that Osama bin Laden had to die? Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, of course I agree, uh, because uh, he was a murderer, I think, and he had killed so many innocent women, men and children. So I think uh, he eventually he was uh, murdered and uh, killed, and it was, uh, I think it was justice. But Naomi, come in here. Many murderers stand trial, and if they're caught unarmed, they're often arrested. Do you think it was justified to shoot him dead? Well, it might not have been the best way no, to deal with it, but I, I think um, the U.S. didn't have a choice. And really, do you think uh, it would have been uh, a good idea to have Osama in a jail sitting somewhere, maybe in Guantanamo? And at the same time, don't you think someone would have tried to break him out? Or don't you think even from there he would still have gotten out the same messages of hate that he's been passing along all these years? Seth, what about you? Do you think that he's probably better off dead? Well, I think uh, uh, supporting killing someone uh, has to have a very high barrier. And I agree with both of the speakers. In this case, the sheer number of individuals that Osama bin Laden's organization killed, including Muslims, uh, in this case uh, indicated that uh, I think it was justified in this kind of situation. And capturing him, where to put him, 
should they put him on trial? Who should conduct that trial? Raised so many serious, very difficult questions that I think in this case there was uh, the, the costs uh, were outweighed by the benefits of killing him. So, hold on, Seth, let me understand this. Are you saying when you have a difficult case or a difficult person to keep in captivity, rather than deal with those problems, you just pull your gun out and shoot them dead? No, a uh, couple of things. First, we still don't know all of the circumstances behind uh, the uh, killing of bin Laden anyway. There was an active firefight going on. But second, my point really is uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the likelihood of response attacks against anywhere that bin Laden was held was extraordinary. Not that the situation was difficult per se, but that the, uh, that the enormous uh, repercussions of holding bin Laden and the retaliatory terrorist attacks, I think, were, were possible. And it is worth adding, of course, we've had differing accounts of what happened in that compound in Abbottabad, but the last that I saw suggested only one person is confirmed to have fired at the U.S. troops as they landed in the compound, and he was shot dead immediately. Let's go back to Abbottabad. Hassan, what about your friends and family in the town? Are they angry that America carried out this attack without first consulting Pakistan? Yeah, most of the people here are angry. They are showing their anger. Today, uh, demonstration was, demonstrations were held here in Aftabad as well, like other cities of Pakistan. And uh, they are thinking that uh, this, is, uh, this was an attack uh, on the sovereignty of the nation. And uh, they were showing their anger. So most of the people here, they are, uh, they are most, mostly they are angry on the uh, attack on Pakistan. So some of them are uh, not... Uh, most of them are not happy uh, because uh, these attacks, and they are happy. Some of them, they are happy uh, that uh, Osama has been killed. But uh, on the other side, they are unhappy that uh, the attacks have been done on uh, the sovereignty of the nation. Seth, what would you say to Pakistanis watching us now on the BBC who feel furious that the United States abuse their sovereignty as they're putting it to us? Well, I think it's actually unfortunate that the relationship between Pakistan and the United States has clearly deteriorated, and it's been deteriorating for the last several months, where the levels of trust are probably at an all-time low, at least since the 1990s. I, I actually think the way to uh, deal with this now is, uh, as we move forward, to ensure that there is joint cooperation in targeting the rest of uh, uh, senior al-Qaeda leaders operating in Pakistan and elsewhere. So I, I would say move forward now. Thanks for those comments. It's worth mentioning as well, Seth. You were senior advisor to the commanding general of U.S. Special Operation Forces in Afghanistan before joining the RAND organization. CJ's in Nigeria, emailing world, have your say at bbc.com. Osama's a criminal who's wasted so many lives without giving them room for a decent burial. So why does he deserve something better? So that big argument about the burial at sea still very much going on. Hassan and Abbottabad, thank you for joining us. Let's stay in Pakistan and bring in Numan Kessa, who's a lawyer in Islamabad. Numan, thank you for joining us on World Have Your Say. Do you think that justice was done when Osama bin Laden was shot? Well, first of all, I'd like to express my great sorrow and grief for the victims of 9-11, 7-7, and any other terrorist attack around the globe, either conducted by the terrorists or the non-terrorists with this non-terrorist being in inverted commas. All the perpetrators of these heinous crimes should have been brought to justice without any fail. When I say that they should have been brought to justice without any fail, this means there should have been due process of law. Mm -hmm. Now, what is due process of law? Due process of law is when a case is, being, is carried on against a person, he should be given an opportunity to be heard. As the Latin phrase goes, audi alterum partum. No one should be condemned unhurt. That person should not be killed as he's unarmed. He should be given a due process of law. So same thing applies to Osama bin Laden as well. Well, no, man, I'm not a big fan no, man, Let me jump in here and bring in Naomi in Nairobi, who didn't seem too concerned with that. Naomi, what would you say to Nurman? He says, even Osama bin Laden has the right to be heard in court. Well, I think uh, it's not a matter of where he's going to be heard in. He had 10 years to be heard, 10 years to change his mind, 10 years to give the world a different opinion of him. I don't think it would have made a difference whether we heard him in court or not. Nerman? Sorry, I could hear. 
No, but what about the point Naomi's making, that he had 10 years to come out and say, I want my day in court. He didn't take the United States up on that offer. I can't hear you properly, but, I'm, but I, what I'm trying to say is, this process, due process of law, was even given to Saddam Hussein as well. He was holed up in a room over there, and he gave some kind of resistance over there as well. But he was caught alive, and he was given this right to due process of law. I'm not saying that the, uh, the court procedure was proper or not, but all I'm trying to say is, at least he was given the right to due process of law, which, for me, Osama bin Laden was not given. Okay. As I was, I was saying, for me, Osama bin Laden is neither a hero nor a zero. All right, me, thank you very much. Just Let me just jump in here because lots of people are going to be responding uh, to what you're saying. And we'll also try and fix up your earpiece. Abra's email, as well, have you say at bbc.com, to say why didn't the US arrest him so they could find out more about Al Qaeda's plans? And KP Team tweets us to say it's estimated that cost $3 trillion on trying to find Osama over the last 10 years. Celebrate that. If you want to, he doesn't sound uh, overly enamoured with us. If you are tweeting us, put the hashtag WHYS along with your tweet and we'll pick that up. Seth, let me just bring you in once more here because lots of our viewers and our listeners on BBC Radio are saying President Obama, when he said he wasn't going to release those photos, said he wouldn't do it because it's not who we are. And then they point at what happened during that raid and they ask, is that really what America wants to be? Uh, well, I think uh, two things here. One is, uh, again, we are talking about the uh, most, one of the most significant mass murderers of individuals, including Muslims, over the past several years. Somebody who has admitted publicly, repeatedly, his involvement in uh, the 9-11 attacks, as well as in multiple attacks since. He's admitted them. I mean, why, why do we need to, to uh, go to a courtroom in this sense when he's publicly and repeatedly admitted them? And second, I would say that, uh, that in this case, uh, uh, there was general support from most governments across the Arab world for killing Osama bin Laden. I, again, I, I don't see in general the, uh, uh, the, 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 the serious downsides of this. We appreciate you joining us in Washington, D.C. You're staying with us, as is Naomi in Nairobi. And a lot of these discussions are revolving around comments from Dr. Rowan Williams. He's the Archbishop of Canterbury. And he said, I think the killing of an unarmed man is always going to leave a very uncomfortable feeling because it doesn't look as if justice is seen to be done. Do you have sympathy with what he's saying, or did you just want Osama bin Laden dead, regardless of how it was done and in what circumstances? If you're watching, we're live here on BBC World News. You can call us up on country code 44 2070 83 72 72 or post at facebook.com slash world have your say. We'll take a break for a couple of minutes and then carry on the conversation. Mozakins, thank you very much indeed for joining me live here on BBC World News. This is World Have Your Say, and we're discussing if justice was done when Osama bin Laden was shot dead, when he was shot dead unarmed, a fact that some of you have picked up as saying that is not the kind of justice you had in mind. In a moment, I'll introduce you to a couple more guests, and I know that we've had calls from Mauritius, New Zealand, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Canada, and Sierra Leone. Do keep those calls coming in. But let me pull up a couple of messages. This is from Cedra Khan posting on Facebook and saying, if he was unarmed and we killed him just as mercilessly as he killed all those innocent people, does it make us any better than him? And Brian in Ontario posts on Facebook, the 3,000 people in the World Trade Center, 200 people in the Pentagon, and the 40 people on United 93 who died were also unarmed. So two differing points there. Let's put both of them to Noman Bennettman, a senior analyst at Quilliam. Now, this is a counter-extremism think tank. And Noman, you were also an Islamist extremist yourself at one point. Uh, where do you stand on this idea of, of justice and whether it was served by shooting an unarmed man dead? I, I think there's something very important here. We're missing the context itself. You know, it's, uh, first of all, I would like to say it's a war. The context, it's a war. You know. And myself, I can tell you from my own experience as being many times in the war zone, you know, it's, uh, it's very difficult, you know, to think like any soldiers, he's prepared to do the, the, you know, the police work. It doesn't work like this, honestly, you know. So we have a war scenario here, you know. These guys, when you send like the uh, special force to a location, 
to you know to target a specific person i think they've been prepared to take him out you know but no but let me let me interrupt you here because in war there is international law which says if you catch an enemy combatant you can't just shoot them if they're not resisting capture so we don't know the circumstances exactly but we know osama bin laden was unarmed shouldn't more have been done to take him alive this is yeah i i think if he's if he's like there's a chance to capture him as a prisoner this is what, what i'm trying to say look i tell you myself you know from uh, my own experience i know you know i i i met Beladen. i i have some experience about him personally Beladen, he's sort of guy he would never ever gonna accept to be taken prisoner you know make no mistake about this and he made a lot of plans many many years ago mm -hmm. you know when he used to uh, to have his, uh, his uh, own bodyguards, you know, always there is someone behind Beladen, you know, from his uh, well-trusted bodyguards to shoot him immediately if there is a situation and possibility Beladen to, Beladen to be taken as a prisoner. So we still don't know exactly what happened, but what I'm trying to say, because we need to be very careful about the message we're send, we sending outside to the world, it's a war scenario. It's not a police operation mm -hmm. to go and arrest someone. No, the one is like uh, the head, used to be the head of a terrorist group. Okay, you know? so, so you make the point this is a, a war scenario, it's not a, a policing scenario, definitely. scenario, not a criminal justice scenario. Let's bring in Ruweda, who's a Kurdish law student based in London. And let's also bring in, while we're doing that, Seth Jones from the RAND organization. I'd be interested to hear the three of you talk this through. Ruweda, go ahead. What's your view of the debate about justice and whether it was served? Well, I think um, it's quite ironic that we're all sitting here discussing whether the death of a mass murderer was justifiable when the people who follow his ideology are probably planning some form of retaliation. In my opinion, the debate or argument is not whether the killing was justifiable, it's what's next, what will we do now? And in terms of, um, I, I think many um, commentators have suggested already that his death if we compare it to the innocent people he killed, you know, I think this, the, the answer is quite clear. He killed innocent people. He didn't give them a second chance. He didn't even think of them. He, he saw them as, as uh, inhumane, perhaps. But, Seth, let's bring you in here. The point so many viewers are making is there is a difference between how al-Qaeda carries on and how we want to carry on. Yeah, I would just say, though, um, uh, in response to some of the viewer comments, that Osama bin Laden was not a civilian. Uh, the individuals on the airplanes and the Twin Towers were civilians. Bin Laden, to go back to Noman's point, this is, in a state of war, he was not a civilian. He has very different international uh, uh, rights under, under uh, international law. The other thing I'd say, just being on some of these missions, is, again, with, with, with some active fire going on, uh, in a house at night with the potential for booby traps, as we've seen in, in many situations, and bin Laden, a moving target, known to generally always carry an AK-47. I think it's easy for us, comfortably sitting in our, uh, uh, our houses or offices, to assume that it was a fairly benign situation, when in most cases it is not at all, especially with someone of this nature. Al has just posted at worldhaveyoursay.com to say it's not about justice for the sake of justice, it's about practical necessity. Killing him has done harm to al-Qaeda. And uh, Noman and uh, Seth, I'm curious to hear the two of you talk, because Noman, you were an Islamist fighter. Seth, you served with the U.S. military in Afghanistan. When the two of you were in the mindset that you were in a war, were you concerned with notions of justice or morality or the right thing to do, or was it just about beating the other side? Maybe, Noman, you could go first. No, m myself, just to make clear, I did serve with the Mujahideen against the Soviet Union, you know, in Afghanistan. So it's, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this, it's very, very hard and difficult when you are in a war situation, people shooting at you, or even if you are in your way to, uh, you know, to attack or to launch an assault against an enemy in a war scenario, to be honest with you, it's not the police work. The first of all, you need to make sure you are targeting a legitimate target. This is the real question. If we said the target was legitimate, that means in a war situation, not a police operation, I think you have to protect yourself to make sure the mission being accomplished. This is, this is the situation. Talking about prisoners, I think it's a completely different uh, issue, I believe. You know, if you are like, uh, 
in a position to take some... I can tell you, myself in Afghanistan during Khost 1991, myself personally, I captured four prisoners, you know. I didn't harm them whatsoever. I handed them over to the Afghanians, you know. So I know that. But when you are engaged in an assault attack, it's extremely difficult. You have less than a second, you know, to decide. Less Alex? than a se second. Sorry, Seth, do you want to come in? Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to, to come in on the, the morality and justice comment because I would say it, is, it was always in the mind uh, any time I was uh, in, in the field, issues of morality and justice. And part of that is a function of intelligence. If you get the wrong information on someone, you go into the wrong compound, you impact a civilian, his family, her family, uh, uh, innocent people, it has extraordinary negative impacts, especially when we're talking about areas uh, where uh, tribes, sub-tribes, and clans uh, are operating. And so as part of Pashtun Wali, there is clearly a revenge factor. So yes, morality and justice, I think, are very significant in general. Um, but in this case, actually seeing bin Laden, I think, changes the game. Because at that point, then there was clear information that it was him. Rueda? Yes. Um, just to come back on some, what some people have been saying about um, Osama bin Laden having you know, being put on trial, and someone suggested that the same thing should have happened as it did with Saddam Hussein. I'm a, I'm Kurdish, so if anyone's suffered under Saddam, it would be my people. Um, Saddam Hussein is not comparable to Osama bin Laden. He did not kill, he did kill innocent people, but he did not wage war on the whole of the non-Muslim world saying they should, you know, uh, be fought. And, and that's what people are not taking into consideration. And I think um, perhaps he should have been captured, perhaps he should have been put on trial, but, you know, if we think of the way how he should have been put on trial, it's literally impossible. Where All would right, it you're, be? So you, you're arguing it's impossible. Those of you watching BBC World News, do you agree that the realities of a raid like that probably made uh, arresting Osama bin Laden impossible? Or are you in uncomfortable uh, with what happened, as the Archbishop of Canterbury says he is? Uh, Seth Noman and Rueda, please just uh, stay with us if you can, because I've got another guest to bring into our conversation. Paul Salem is with the Carnegie Middle East Centre in Beirut and joins us live. Um, Paul, lots of our viewers are wondering how the, the death of Osama bin Laden may impact on the Arab Spring and on the region where you work. What's your view of that issue? Well, I would say the impact is very, very limited. Uh, Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda had lost, uh, you, know, you know, almost entirely any support they had in the Arab world several years ago when it was clear that al-Qaeda was tar targeting Muslims and Arabs in Iraq, and Jordan, and Lebanon, and Egypt, and Morocco, and Algeria. Uh, and so they really had no major constituency. Of course, there are cells here and there that are still part of al-Qaeda, and will still be part of al-Qaeda, and will take uh, bin Laden as a martyr. And if he was captured, they would also take him as a hero. Uh, but the Arab world moved beyond bin Laden several years ago. And certainly, after the Arab Spring, the Arab uprising, the Arab public, Arab media, Arab public opinion, is riveted and, and mobilized around the pro-democracy movement, uh, which certainly flies in the face of anything uh, radical Islam or bin Laden himself had proposed. Completely different discourse, completely different mindset, and has, uh, has transformed the Arab world in a matter of weeks. And that certainly headlines all over the Arab world. The bin Laden issue is sort of a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it was commented on. People had positions as to whether, as you're debating now, should he have been killed, should he have been captured. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's not much uh, love for the U.S. in the region, so there was not much rejoicing, certainly. Well, no, but I mean, also so, not, certainly not that's much echoed by at the, his, the at his, uh, death. That's certainly echoed by the feedback we're getting back from Pakistani viewers who seem equally angry with Al Qaeda and with America. Well, for the moment, many thanks to Seth and Noman, to you, Paul Salem from Beirut, and also to Rueda, a uh, Kurdish law student. We're going to carry on the conversation at worldhaveyoursay.com and here on BBC World News in a few minutes' time. Welcome to World Have Your Say. Well, in the past few hours, Islamist websites have confirmed that Osama bin Laden is dead. And for the moment, your discussions have moved on from whether he was killed or not 
the rights and wrongs of the way his life ended. Now, do you believe that justice was done, or do you agree with the Archbishop of Canterbury, who says justice is hard to come by when you kill an unarmed man? Perhaps the main thing you feel is that he was killed, and the rest is unimportant detail. Also, if waterboarding provided information that led to the raid, do you feel its use would now be justified? And should we credit President Bush for understanding that? We've got much to talk about. We heard from over 30 countries in the first edition of World Have Your Say. If you want to take part, as ever, all the details are on the screen. Yes, all the contact details are on the screen. If you want to give us a ring, tweet us, text us, email us, go on the blog or Facebook as well. And we've got guests in Islamabad, London and Nairobi waiting to talk with you. But before we bring them into the conversation, let's get the latest on the Bin Laden story. We've had a major development, as I was saying, in the past few hours. Al-Qaeda has confirmed that Osama Bin Laden is dead, according to a statement attributed to the group and posted on internet forums. The statement said his blood would not be wasted and that al-Qaeda would continue attacking the US and its allies. Meanwhile, thousands of protesters in cities across Pakistan have joined anti-American demonstrations in support of bin Laden and in condemnation of what they perceive as a US attack on Pakistan's sovereignty. In other news, as it has done for several weeks now, Friday has brought anti-government protests in Syria. Demonstrators have taken to the streets in Damascus and in other cities, despite a huge security presence. As you'll know, President Bashar al-Assad's government has not so far tolerated anti-government demonstrations. And we do have unconformed reports from activists who claim that six people have been killed today. The coroner at the inquest into the London terrorist attacks on July the 7th, 2005, has returned a verdict of unlawful killing. 52 people were killed in four suicide bombs. Now, this comes at the end of a five-month-long inquiry that heard evidence from more than 300 witnesses. And the Japanese government has ordered the temporary closure of a nuclear power plant just south of Tokyo after concerns over its ability to withstand an earthquake. The Prime Minister Naoto Khan says Hamaoka nuclear power station must be prepared for major tremors and tsunamis before it's reopened. Well, let me introduce you to our first three guests. Naomi Matua is a blogger based in Nairobi. She was in the city in 1998 when al-Qaeda attacked the U.S. Embassy there. We're also joined by Norman Kessa, a lawyer in Islamabad, and by Norman Bennettman, a senior analyst at Quilliam. That's an organization, uh, a think tank, which is designed to counter Islamist extremism. Good to have all three of you on the program. Let's begin by pulling up a message from Charles Wolf, who lost his wife on September the 11th, 2001. He called us, and this was his comment. He said, this man has been terrorizing people for 20 years. Healing is the right word to use here. We can never have closure. The killing of Osama bin Laden has already helped me in my healing. Well, Naomi, uh, you were there in 1998. You helped help the injured people affect, affected by that bomb attack. Do you feel the same, that, that killing Osama bin Laden in whatever way does help your, your feelings about that event? Yes, I do, absolutely, because uh, we, we in, in my opinion, I don't think Kenya warranted such an attack. We were only targeted because we were an ally of the U.S. But to have more than uh, 300 people die because of one man's ideologies, I certainly don't feel sorry that he's dead. So, Noman in London, is this about vengeance as much as it is about justice? No, I don't think it's vengeance, honestly, to be honest with you. I, I, I would like to emphasize on something here which is crucial and very important, you know. I, I think Bin Laden caused more harm and uh, damage to the Muslims before any other nations in the world. So it was a real Muslim problem, you know. It's not just like America versus Osama Bin Laden, no. Osama Bin Laden killed, uh, as a leader of Al-Qaeda, he killed more Muslims I take your point, Noam, but let's stick to the yeah. original issue raised by Charles and, and also by Naomi in Nairobi. Do you feel that an element of vengeance would be understandable 
from those who have been no, affected yeah, by course, al-Qaeda's as a human actions. Being. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, of course, as a human being, you can't deny the natural human nature. You know, if everybody, people, they, you know, they, they feel comfortable when they, you know, take sort of like revenge or whatever you're going to call it. Uh, but uh, I think I think it's a just we, we need to put it in the, in the right context. You know, here it's not just revenge because it will be utilized by Al Qaeda and other uh, extremist group. You know, mm -hmm. to to put it in a different context. That's why. Bilal okay, well, and, I, and I take your point about Muslims. While we've been talking about this on World Have Your Say on BBC Radio and here on BBC World News, mm -hmm. many Muslims from around the world have said good riddance to this man who you know what, gave our, our what religion I'm saying this, a bad because name. Some, I've, I've heard some like uh, victims, you know, or the families of uh, victims in, in London here or in the US you know they 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 still you know like feel a pitter because Bin Laden he didn't capture it and put before trial you know mm -hmm. so even the killing of Osama Bin Laden for some victims you know it's still not enough so for them it's not enough but you say vengeance is understandable if you're watching wherever you are in the world do you think it's understandable and also do you think it's justified to go and seek Vengeance. Do call us up, country code 44 2070 83 72 72. As ever on World Have Your Say, we're live. Calls coming in from Turkey, the Seychelles, the Netherlands, Morocco, India, Hong Kong, Saudi Arabia, Bermuda, and Australia. And I can see that Fazli in Saudi Arabia has posted on Facebook to say, if the rule of the jungle is what we want, then we must be willing to accept it. And when it happens to us, too. So a word of caution there. Nurman Kessa, you're a lawyer in Islamabad. Do you think? A dangerous precedent has been set by the way the Americans carried out this raid. Well, this indeed is a dangerous precedent. As I said earlier, that a criminal, no matter how big a criminal he is, no matter how big a bounty is there on his head, he should be given the right to due process of law. If a person is not given a due process of law, this is, for me, a very da dangerous precedent. And this too coming from a country which is a gr greater supporter of democracy and due process of law mm -hmm. around the globe. I, I, as a lawyer, can't expect this well, okay, from America. Let me, let me, let me inter interrupt you here, because Pete, who I think is in South Africa, has tweeted using the hashtag WHYS to say, how would Osama bin Laden ever get a fair trial? You would never get a jury who, who had not heard of him and was not prejudiced against him. What would you say to that point? Doesn't sound like Norman can hear us, which is a shame. But Norman, let me put that point to you. Do you think the the dream some people had of putting Osama bin Laden on trial was was ever realistic? No, I agree with your question. You know, it's I think it's unrealistic to be honest with you because I think it's very hard, honestly, to find the lawyers. You know, they will accept to be like uh, Osama bin Laden's lawyers. I I think it's 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 undoable to be honest with you it's unrealistic mm -hmm. it's unrealistic why because of the as i told you it's 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 a, it's a unique war scenario you know it's a unique asymmetric uh, warfare Bladen, i think he he decided to, to to fight against the whole world you know so i i believe uh, most of the lawyers you know they will refuse honestly and it happened to saddam as well you know saddam hussein in in iraq if you see most of the respectable lawyers they refuse to be like uh, Saddam so say lawyers, it's, it's, uh, there's well, a moral we issue know, here we, as well. We know full well the reason they refused to be his lawyer. They were terrified because people representing Saddam Hussein were, were being targeted. Now, if I was mentioning that uh, we've got guests in Islamabad, Nairobi, and in London, but of course, World well, Have Your Say is a global conversation. We're getting calls from all over the globe. Let's cross to the World Have Your Say team where they're taking your calls and find out what you're saying from Ben, who's there. That's right, Ros. We've taken calls from around 40 countries uh, so far. Thanks for all those calls. And if you don't get through, we will call you back and, of course, continue this conversation on our radio program at 1700 GMT. Now, a lot of people calling in to talk about the justification uh, for killing Osama bin Laden, but also speculating about how a trial would work had he been captured alive. Uche and Mali called in. I was just speaking to him. He wanted to respond to Naman Kassa in uh, Pakistan, saying that bin Laden destroyed people and I'm happy that he's gone, the world is now a safer place. This one from John in Dunedin in New Zealand. Hello to you and thanks for your point. He says it doesn't make sense to kill a man who's unarmed in front of his children. I'd be interested in hearing whether our guests have an opinion on whether that makes any difference. And also I've just been speaking to Navi in Melbourne, Australia. Now, he lost his cousin in the 9-11 attacks. He thinks we could have got more information on terror networks had 
Bin Laden been captured and not killed. And of course, if you don't want to call us, you can always post on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash world have your say. Thanks very much, Ben. And if you're watching and do go to our Facebook page, click the like button at the top of the page and then you'll get all of our updates in your news feed and you can take part in the conversations as and when you choose. Now, we've said goodbye to some of our guests. They'll be coming back a little later. Let's bring in three more people to speak with you. Meryn is a blogger with us in Lahore. She's an American of Pakistani descent. We have Seth Jones of the RAND organization, who used to be an advisor to the commanding general of U.S. Special Operations in Afghanistan. And first of all, let's speak to Siddharth Vadarajan, strategic affairs editor at the Hindu in Delhi. Siddharth, welcome to World Have Your Say. Do you think that the Americans missed a trick by not trying to get more information out of Osama bin Laden? No, I think I, I don't think um, Osama bin Laden uh, would yield any information that was of any uh, great value through interrogation. Uh, we know, for example, that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, uh, despite being tortured, or water, uh, waterboarded or whatever you have it, uh, has not yielded anything of any great significance. And Osama would have been a harder nut to crack. I think the issue really is, uh, was the, were the SEALs given a mission of uh, basically executing him? Uh, did the U.S. consider the option of uh, capturing him uh, if there was a chance? I think these are, these are questions that one could ask. I'm not sure, because I think despite the difficulty of a trial, uh, uh, I, I find it hard to swallow or to accept that, uh, uh, given all the difficulties, the only possible option was to send a mission in to kill him. Uh, I think if his, his live capture was a possibility, it should have been done. Uh, from some of the details I've seen of the way the operation went, uh, it may not have been possible, but I think this is one question that the uh, United States uh, perhaps needs to answer in the, in the days to come. Well, Seth's not speaking on behalf of the United States, but he is there and he is American. What response would you give, Seth? Well, I do agree to some, uh, 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 to some degree. I, again, I think the issue, and we don't know a lot about the tactical level uh, uh, conditions on the ground at that time, at night. And no man knows Osama bin Laden better than I do, but I would say... Uh, tracking him for some time, uh, there was a strong feeling, and he said this himself, that he would not go down uh, uh, without shooting. Uh, and, and, and again, he had some guards with him. There were concerns about booby traps in areas. So I do think the, uh, if you're going into a house to either to capture or to kill him, this kind of situation presents extraordinary risks, extraordinary tension. Um, and there have clearly been in, uh, uh, a range of cases where uh, uh, U.S., Pakistani, Indian, and other soldiers have gone into this type of situation and died because of booby-trapped walls or doors. Uh, so, again, I think there's reason to be very seriously concerned about the uh, security situation here. If you're tweeting as you're watching us, put WHYS as the hashtag, and we'll pick up all the messages. Mary, and you're a blogger in Lahore. Let's get your view of what you're hearing. Um, there are two things you need to consider before you even go into this discussion is that, number one, USA considers Pakistan an ally in the war on terror. And number two, um, that like we've been saying for the past few minutes, that he was un unarmed. Now, the thing that happens right here and what people are saying and they're con you know, constantly questioning the manner in which this was taken out is that how exactly are you expected to consider someone an ally and still attack their soil without um, permission. This honestly is attack, an attack on the sovereignty, and it shows how hypocritical this operation was. And you've seen the statements coming out saying that the CIA did not trust uh, Pakistan with this. So I think what we really need to do first is to redefine the, the, ally, the alliance we have with Pakistan and redefine how justice should be carried out, because a man, no matter how um, no matter how dangerous he is, is still a human being, and you need to give him a trial. I know, I'm pretty sure nobody would uh, let him go for that. Nobody would like to represent him. Well, certainly that, when... that, that point is being made by a lot of our viewers, saying, how would you actually go about the practicalities of a trial? Maureen, you mentioned a lot of uh, issues there, talking about resetting the relationship between Pakistan and America. I think, frankly, it's been reset. It's just a question of how it turns out now in the next few weeks and months. We're going to carry on talking about all of these issues raised by the death of Osama bin Laden. But let's just pause for a couple of minutes. 
Welcome back to World Have Your Say. We're talking about whether justice was seen to be done when Osama bin Laden was killed. Spendrick has tweeted using the WHYS hashtag saying his death was justifiable, but it wasn't justice. Danny's watching us in Wyoming simply saying he got what he deserved. And here's a message from Machimba in, in Zambia on our Facebook page. Whatever the means, information must be gotten from these terror mongers. If you live by the sword, expect to be waterboarded and die by the sword. Well, let's put that point first to Siddharth from the Hindu newspaper in Delhi. Siddharth, we know that a detainee gave information that led to the US finding uh, Osama bin Laden. We don't know whether that detainee was waterboarded, but either way, does it prove the necessity of places like Guantanamo Bay? I don't think it does. I think uh, you have lots of examples of, I mentioned earlier in the program, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, for example, who was, who's been subjected to uh, waterboarding and uh, other kinds of torture techniques and essentially has been misleading his interrogators. Uh, we know that Libby, who was, who was tortured in the run-up to the Iraq war, gave uh, false information that led to the uh, death of thousands of uh, innocent civilians there after George Bush invaded Iraq. So I think torture, uh, there's a reason why international law and the international community have put a ban on torture. I think it's very good sound moral reasons, but I think also operational reasons. The information you get is not uh, very credible. And I think um, I've seen conflicting reports about the role that waterboarding or torture may have played in the hunt for Osama bin Laden. Some people claim that leads uh, produced from a person well, who was I, tortured I, I think were, in fact, useful. The short answer is we don't know, but certainly people online are exactly. discussing the principle behind this issue. Naomi, you're with us from Nairobi. What's your view of this? If people have to be waterboarded to get useful information, do you think this operation has shown the value of that? I have to agree with the former, with the previous uh, contributor that in this case, I don't think it would have yielded any valuable information. Osama is a hardened criminal, but either way, no, we should not use torture to get information from anyone. It's inhumane. So you say it's inhumane. Rueda, you're a Kurdish law student. What's your view of this? We know a detainee uh, held by the Americans gave information that led to Osama bin Laden being found. Would you have any qualms with waterboarding being used to get that information? Absolutely. Uh, torture is illegal according to international law. It's wrong. It's immoral. And most importantly, it does lead investigators to false leads. Perhaps one person, you know, confessed through torture, but dozens of others haven't. And in the case of Osama, there's no evidence to suggest that his findings were linked to, you know, what evidence they derived from the detainees that were tortured. Rueda, thank you very much for being on the programme. Thanks to Naomi as well and Siddharth live with us from Delhi. Let's quickly shift back to Seth, who's still live from Washington, D.C. Seth, do you think that what this week has taught us was that President Bush knew more than some suspected about getting the right information and chasing down the enemies of America. Well, I think on the issue of waterboarding, if that's what you're asking, uh, I think as a general precedent, uh, y using non-coercive, non-torture uh, techniques, uh, from my understanding, I'm not an interrogator, but from my understanding, especially from FBI, uh, F uh, U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation interrogators, is torture is generally not uh, productive as a way to get information out. So I think it's a general precedent. I do think there, is, there are two questions. One is, uh, is waterboarding torture? And I know there is a debate there. It certainly there, is. There, if, you're right, there's a debate. I'm not sure uh, we're going to have time for it on, on this program. A quick last point, if you've got it. Uh, last point is there may be situations if there is an imminent need uh, that uh, coercive techniques, one could make an argument if they help save hundreds or thousands of lives. All right, well, we're going to pick up on those issues on World Have Your Say on BBC Radio in one hour's time. Keep the calls coming. You can see the team there. Give them a ring if you want to take part in that discussion. Thanks to Seth. Thanks also to Noman here in London. I'll speak to you very soon. <laughs>